It's time for you talking to me with your host, Big JD. That's right, you're listening to you talking to me. I'm your host, Big JD. Well, Frickin' Zero is a gifted local artist who's passionate about creating what he wants, how he wants, and his art is definitely wild. He's here with us on the show to talk about his art, his Frickin' Zero freakwear, and also uh, maybe offer some advice to those that are interested in art as well. Frick, welcome to you talking to me. Thanks. What first got you interested in art at all? Um, when I was young and... Uh My mother would buy me coloring books and I would draw outside the lines with a pen and I never really liked coloring and then I would get doodle pads instead because she gave up on the coloring books and I just kept drawing and that's how I started. I just kept drawing and drawing. That's cool. So from very early on you had uh, doodle pads as you call them, like uh, little sketch pads and stuff like that? Little sketch pads right from pretty much day one. Were you uh, drawing on all kinds of things? Like, did your mother find you drawing on walls or anything like that when you were a kid? Yeah, um, I did do that, and I did a lot of drawing on my clothes, and that used to get her quite upset. I would come home and on her clothes, on my clothes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would come home with new, je- you know, I'd leave this with new jeans on, and I'd come back, and they'd have little drawings all over the pant legs and stuff. Oh wow! And so, what were you drawing when you were when you were a kid? Was it anything in particular that you were into? I can't remember, but I I do know that when I was uh, in grade five or six. I drew my first demon. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, and uh, it didn't I, stop from there, did it? No, and <laughs> I really liked it. It gave my I gave myself goosebumps because yeah. I just liked it so much, and I brought it to school and showed everybody. And so, what's your your favorite subject with respect to art, as far as um, I guess what you like to draw? Well, it always changes. I'm constantly evolving. Um, right now, it's cross gender type uh, people. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of symbols and stuff in it on uh, the good and bad in us to the male and female in us like all the different parts that make us up I like to collage them into my work when you talk about uh, cross gender art and drawing and stuff like that um, do, do you use anything for subject or to get ideas or anything like that or you just pretty much draw out of your head kind of thing or yeah how does I just that work? draw out of my head I, I've opened up as a person in my life and uh I realized a lot more than I did when I was young, and I like to explore, and I just like what I'm drawing. It just comes out of me that way, and I like it. I like using all the colors, too, and stuff. I don't know. I think it, I think it needs to be out there. I, I got to say, your stuff is definitely, it, it's very cool, very wild. Uh, a little later on, we'll let people know where they can check all that stuff out, too. How is it perceived? You must get mixed reactions, you know, due to the nature of some of the content as well. Yeah, um, I do get mixed reactions, but I don't really care because it's from for me. Right. And I do have a, a lot of people that do like it. So the few that don't like it or wonder if it's why I do it, I don't really care. Like, I have enough friends that give me support and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. it makes me happy so you know i i know that you do a lot of sketching uh you're doing an awful lot of painting lately Mm -hmm. you favor one over the other or no i don't favor well for the time right now i'm i'm liking the painting a lot but it'll switch i know it will i'll start doing something else later on and just whenever the passion starts to run out and i get pulled into a different direction i just go with the flow and try as many things as i can Tell us about Frick Outdoors. How did the character come about, and and what did you accomplish with Frick Outdoors? Well, when I first started doing Frick Outdoors, I I never had uh, cartooned before. Mm -hmm. And I sent it to so many people, over 200 people I sent stuff to. And I got a lot of people telling me no, and don't don't send us anymore we and i was like you don't understand though but i'm i'm good i'm gonna be good <laughs> yeah, yeah. so i just kept working on it and eventually i was uh drawing for the biggest uh, outdoor magazine in canada the biggest outdoor magazine in the states and the biggest outdoor magazine in the world wow 
as an exclusive uh, cartoonist for all of their publications. And I was doing Christmas cards for these magazines to send to their advertisers, and I just it just kept growing and growing, and I did a lot. So I was pretty happy. Tell us a little bit about Frick Outdoors. What, what, who or what is that character? Um, it's just uh, a character that I made. I was really into the outdoors for a long time, kayaking, backpacking, and all of that. And mm-hmm. a lot of f- funny stuff happens out there. And I started putting it down on uh, paper. And I just wanted to be a cartoonist for some reason. So I thought I'd give it a try. And uh, it worked out pretty good. Let's talk about Frickin' Zero Freakwear. Mm-hmm. You're doing shirts and, and, and other things, I guess, now, and you're on uh, what I believe is your maybe third design? Uh, fourth design, shirt, fourth design? Yeah. Okay. We're working on a, a fifth one very shortly. Wow. How did Frickin' Zero Freakwear start up? Well, I was I was doing uh, sending some designs out to somebody who had a t-shirt business, and they sent me product back, and I thought I could do better. And I was seeing this girl at the time who said, well, why don't you? So, well, I don't know. Let's do it. So I started doing it, and I got great response. And uh, now I've got my shirts out as far as Iowa, mm-hmm. Toronto, Ottawa, just all over. And I know firsthand that you're, you're having trouble keeping them uh, in stock, which is a good thing, I guess. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So you're not only doing shirts, though. I've seen, uh, like, dress shirt. Yeah, dress with, shirts, with in the back. Uh, jogging pants, uh, or I guess that's what the girls call them. I've done some dresses, just tank tops, all mm-hmm. kinds of different kinds of clothes. And they all have the logo on the back, at the lower back. It says, get your freak on. Right, okay. Yeah. No, when you put them on, uh, like you said, jogging pants, are they on the leg or are they on the butt? Or it just or? says on the butt, get your freak on with my oh, okay. uh, my logo with the skulls. And, cool. Yeah. Have you done any hoodies? Uh, not yet. It's summer, so I was thinking I would probably do that. Like in the fall, winter wear, yeah, yeah, yeah for uh, in time for Christmas, yeah, and nice. do some toques maybe and stuff. Oh yeah, matching very toques. nice. I'm also kind of curious as to how when they when they put the your your art on the shirts, mm-hmm. they come out fabulous. So obviously wherever you take them is is really good. Was that a concern of yours though? Um, because your your detail is very fine. It's it was definitely a concern, and uh, the clothes that I put it on are all high quality too. Like mm-hmm. I I spend my money to get the best I can. Yeah. Um, it is a little bit more expensive than I could get it at elsewhere, but the quality I don't. But you pay for be, what you get, yeah, right? So I don't think the quality can be beat. Every every pen line and every stroke is on that piece of clothing. It, mm-hmm. it looks good. So yeah, that must make a difference too as well. Um, for one thing, how are they putting it on? How is it transferred on? It's not like a. It's not heat press. Right. It's, it's right. silk screen. It's an actual silk it's screen. Right in the shirt. Yeah. Basically, it'll, it'll last long, long yeah. time. And I know you're frequently called upon to do uh, artistic jobs and, and things like that. What, what types of things have you been asked to do that you might have done art for? Um, I do things for, um, like, tattoos and stuff okay. like that. I've done you, don't, do you don't actually do the tattoos, but you do the, the artwork for yeah, them? Yeah, I'll do the flash. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I've done things like books, coloring books for people in the States. There are coloring books for Kids Against Drugs. I did that uh, okay. for a couple publications I drew for. Just anything anybody wants, basically, I'll do. Mm-hmm. Do you do uh, when you do any work on the computer? Do you actually sketch on there? Do you use a tablet or anything? Or I have one, but I'm so old fashioned. I still haven't used it. I've had it for six months. It's all hooked up and everything, but I haven't even picked oh, yeah? up the okay. pen for it. I like to use real the real art. Well, did you see those new things now where you can take a, a regular uh, pen or pencil and attach a USB cable to it? No, I so you can seen draw that. on paper. And, no, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you've you've done. And tattoos um how about album covers cd covers yeah i do uh, i've done quite a few stuff for bands uh, t-shirt designs and cd covers and stuff like that i've done some stuff for local bands and st- yeah i like it yeah anything to help out a fellow artist you know so where can uh listeners find freaking zero Freakwear? where's the best place to uh, find that on the web i guess um, my Facebook page is probably Facebook, the best okay. place because I just post everything on mm-hmm. there. And if, uh, you know, you can email me or send me a message on Facebook if you're interested in something and we'll work on it from there. Cool. And that's uh, Facebook. Uh, I guess the forward slash on that is Frickin' Zero Art. Yep. Frickin' Zero Art. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And how about uh, the paints that you use? 
What type of paint do you use? Do Acrylics, you watercolor. Um, I use everything. I use charcoal, uh, colored pencils, anything. It's just, you don't mix no, the colored pencils with the paint or anything, though? Yeah. Like, if no. you're not, like I'll stick the, uh, crumble up the pencil, the lead. Oh, you do? But no. No. I had to get okay. you back for okay. the Yeah, you had me going there for a yeah. second. How about other forms of art? Because I know you delve in many different forms of art other than just sketching and painting and, and you know, all the things that you do with that and, and do for other people as well. But, I mean, you've worked with other things, wood and, and uh, is it uh, bone or something that you yeah, carve bone, into? Yeah, animal bone, yeah. Um, I've done scrimshaw, which is a pretty tedious art form. I like doing that. It takes a long time, though. Um, what is that? That's a, t- a for- type like, of carving of something. Yeah, kind of? it's a in a bone. You use a, a sewing needle and you scratch okay. the image in, and you put India ink on it with mm-hmm. a steel wool, and yep. you keep shining the ink off, and then just making more scratches. And it takes a long time, but eventually, you have a piece. I've done work with gourds, wood burning in the gourds, and decorating with uh, feathers and, and native symbols. Okay, yeah. Uh, canoe paddles, wood burning in to them with uh, the feathers, and mm-hmm. I make my own arrowheads out of animal bone and use that. Uh, I've done all kind anything. I the can, skulls. What about the skulls? Yeah, you do I, some work with skulls as well. Uh, I like to decorate animal skulls. I mm-hmm. like to paint the, on them and uh, hang feathers and, and beads and stuff. I was them. told the dogs in the neighborhood are, are all been missing lately, and I don't <laughs> think it's it's bad if nobody wants the dogs anyway. <laughs> I want to mention to your slideshows. Can people check those out on, on the web as well? YouTube? Yeah, or, or go something? to YouTube and uh, put in Frickin' Zero. And I have my art on there with music going uh, with it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a band called Dominica from uh, Manitoba. They're pretty bi- big. And uh, they gave me permission to use their user uh, material. Okay, user yeah. material. Good. And the drummer, he wears uh, Frickin' Zero Freak wear on cool. stage. So. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Then uh, make sure you check out Frickin' Zero's YouTube page and should spell that because uh, it's not probably what you maybe would think it is. It's F-R-I-K-I-N Zero. Yeah. Z-E-R-O. Definitely check out Frickin' Zero Art on Facebook. You can just do a search for Frickin' Zero Art mm-hmm. probably and it'll come up. And is that like just an open page basically? Yeah. Okay. You, you have a number of, of, of bands. Uh, we talked about you doing um, CD covers and things like that yeah. and you, you've done local bands but you also have uh, some various bands I guess uh, around the city that help out as far as uh, some of your slideshows and the things that you do for provide music. Yeah. Jeffrey David's Blues Connection. Yeah. Voodoo Mafia. Mm-hmm. There's a band in the States uh, not far from us called the Crash Dolls. I just drew a picture for them. I don't know right. if they're going to use it or not, but they liked it. Oh, I did Wicked Angel back in the day. Definitely my very first uh, uh, cassette cover that I ever did for a band was for uh, Wicked Angel. Wow, big 80s metal band. Yeah. I can uh, attest to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in the <laughs> Auto Trader office in the middle of the night, I believe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. So what's in store for... Frickin' Zero's future? Um, I don't know. Um, I like to just let everything surprise me. I like to go with my fa- uh, feelings and my passion and just see, see what happens. I mean, tomorrow I might not paint ever again and do something else and wood burn for the rest of my life. It's a good thing we got this interview in today. Yeah, then. but yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't like to plan ahead. I like to just do what I want when I want to do it and right. be, be as free as possible. But we can't expect a new design. Because you're working on a new design for the freaking Zero Freakware, so that's, that'll be really cool. That's in stone, yeah. Yep. And so, uh, once again, definitely check out uh, Freaking Zero Art on Facebook. I really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show. Thanks a lot for having me. I think art should be for yourself before it's for anyone else. And Frickin' Zero has his attitude down to an art. Check out Frickin' Zero on Facebook and on YouTube. This is you talking to me. I'm Big JD. Thanks for listening. <laughs>